Um, and I am thankful that if you are new here, if this is your first, second, third time that you uh, gave us a chance because we take those chances seriously. We take those chances seriously. Hey, we are in a series called Grace Still. We are in a series called Grace Still. And um, I am excited about this uh, message here. I do have a question for us, though. Um, I, I am really, 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 really curious of, of, of how you all like scripture. Do you raise your hand in here if you love going line by line dissecting scripture? Okay, great. Uh, that is very helpful because sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't. But this morning we are going to do that because it's very, this message here is very important. Tell the person beside you that you can change and that you are graced to change. You are graced to change. That, that word grace has two meanings we have been talking about. Um, 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 Maria spoke yesterday that, that if I get this right, that the word grace means pleasure, joy. And then the other meaning is, is undeserved kindness from God. And uh, you can see how those two play and how they play fairly. And, 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 and I believe that because of un God's undeserved kindness that you can change. If you are a longtime follower of Jesus Christ, you can change. And you have changed. If you are a, an, an, a doubter and you're like, I don't know, I don't know about this, Thing, hey, hey, there is change available to you. And if you are a non-believer and or skeptical, there is change available for you too. I met this guy. I met um, this guy that I I, I I grew up with. His name is Dane, and we used to. Uh, just played basketball in the yard at my uh, uh, grandma's house in Salisbury. And he, he was an, an incredible dude, one of the nicest dudes that you will ever meet. And for some reason, years went by and I did not see him. I did not see him. And then the next time I saw him was, I believe, at a Thanksgiving dinner. He uh, uh, pulled up, I kid you not. The same person, but I did not recognize him at all. I did not know who he was. It took me back. It took me a second. This, it was the first, that, that was the first time that that has ever happened in my life. He didn't change his hair. He didn't change his clothes. He didn't change his, his style. He didn't get plastic surgery. I just did not recognize him. He was different. He was new. And I was like, who is this? I heard the gospel. I was sitting in someone's car and, and I've shared this story with you several times and I heard the gospel. And he was there. And I said, I don't know. And the person talking, I said, I don't know what you're talking about, but if it does that, I want it. If it does that, because that's wild. If it changes a person like that, I want it. And I did not know in that moment that God wanted it for me too. This morning I'm speaking to two different people. The first one is the first kind of person that may be you is that you have been wanting to change, but you can't. You are in cycles, 
and those cycles keep coming. You want to do things a new way and you want a new you, but some reason you keep snapping back with the same thought processes, with the same attitude. This morning, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better, but somehow by the end of the day, I'm right back where I was. I am talking to you. And the second person I am talking to, and that first person, and you may not be a believer, and you may not follow Jesus, but I'm here to tell you that you don't have to wind up and you don't have to keep enduring the same cycle God has changed for you through his son, Jesus Christ. The second person I am talking to is almost the exact same position. Is that you have been following Jesus for a while, but for some reason, you don't feel changed. You're not you are, you are so convinced that you are not changed that you maybe keep going through the same cycles and thought processes. And I'm here to tell you that you have changed. But maybe you haven't fully, truly realized it yet. That you have changed but maybe you haven't fully grasped it. And in Romans 6, in Romans 6, if you could just bear with me for a second. In Romans 6, there are two reasons why you can and have changed. And this is a bit of a, like a theology pathway. Does anybody in here like theology? Great. Oh, okay. I was about to say great three of us. But it's a bit of a theology pathway because it's really important. It's really important that we attempt to grab on, and it's really important that by the grace of God, Father, hear me. Please, that we grab these two concepts that Paul talks about in Romans. Because they are literally life-changing. Literally life-changing. And I want to read it. It says this. For, verse 5, for if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Since a person who has died is freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all but the life he lives he lives in God so you too consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies Paul gets very practical do not let mortal sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires and do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. But as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God and all the parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin will not rule over you because you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin will not be your master because you are no longer under the law, but now you are under grace. Father, um, help me to speak your words only in love and in kindness and in gentleness. Uh, Father, help me to speak these words as if I am, because I am 
exactly the person that needs to hear it as well. I am no different from anyone in this room. So help me to deliver your words with that posture. In Jesus' name, amen. I, there are two truths in this that, that like Paul speaks of. We are struggling to change. And if you are a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, you have changed. If maybe there's someone in this room that has not received Jesus into their heart, but is seeking change and you have tried in every way, but you cannot, there is change available for you right now. And I feel like when I was uh, um, working through this passage is that this message may not even be for the unbeliever in the room, but for someone you know. That you can take this message with you and share it with someone that you know because it is that powerful. It is that powerful. Um, 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 in Romans, Paul is saying that you can change and that you have changed. Why does it say that? The first reason is that the old me is dead. Like we have maybe heard this, that the old you is gone. The old you is dead. Jay-Z said something very profound. Jay-Z is a profound writer and a great theologian. He says that if you want the old me, go buy my old albums. If you want the old me, go and buy my old albums. That's, that's the posture that I want for us. If you want the old me, go. Go and see if you can find it. But, but like while this line is clever, it is not a, a, a true for the believer. And I'm going to tell you why. Verse five says this, for if we have been united with him and the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless. Here's the deal. I love this verse. Verse five is extremely powerful. It says, for if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, what that is saying is that for if... When Jesus died, that we, our old self, our sin, if he died, then our old self has died with him. If he died, then our sin has died with him. And in and, and this passage, it... it in verse uh, six, it, it uses the word sin, and I just want to clarify because um, in different contexts that could mean uh, different things, and, and that is a word that has been weaponized. You sinner, sin, sin. But what I would love to uh, point out in the book of Romans, in this uh, chapter, when it refers to sin, it refers to old self like sin is your old self sin is your old self so whenever it says sin it's talking about your old self and then that in terms what is your old self your old self is is the one from adam adam and eve is a, it is a descendant of adam adam rejected god our old self in the most simplest form, our old self rejects God constantly in every way. It has a nature to reject God. God says, go right. Your nature is to go left. God says, don't do that. Your nature is to do it. God says, do that. Your nature is to not. God says, be with me. You don't feel like it. How many of you deal with that? 
daily. Spend time with me. I just want you to be with me. I don't feel like it. That's rejection. You are rejecting God. That is our old self. And and whenever it says sin, it is referring to that. It says that you have been united in the likeness of his death. You have been united. That is such a powerful, powerful, powerful statement. We do this, uh, uh, this thing called baptisms, which we did a, f- a few weeks ago. But that word baptism isn't even a religious word. That word baptism comes from just uh, like, uh, like immersing anything underwater. Anything. It could be a cup. Oh man, you baptized that cup. It could be your clothes. Ah, you baptized that clothes. That is how it was used. But, but at the basis of that was, it was a, a trying to captivate what happens. That like when Jesus died, that you were immersed in his death. When you go underwater, there's, there's this thing about baptism is, is I have this policy that when I put a person underwater that they have to come up. Otherwise, it doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. Hold them under to have a conversation, it doesn't end well. But when a person puts you and dunks you under water, you, every part of you is immersed. There is nothing that the water doesn't touch. There's nothing that the water doesn't touch. Therefore, if you are immersed in this death, everything that is of your old self dies. But we somehow don't realize that. And that is okay. We can be excited about being raised to life, but I think that we need to be as excited about our old self dying. And it says that, verse 6, that we know that our old self was crucified with him. Our old self was crucified, not we crucify ourselves. Like our old self was crucified, nailed to the cross. He did it, not us. We try to kill ourselves. We try to kill our own habits. We uh, try to kill our own addictions. Somehow they get stronger. Hmm. Every time we attempt to do it ourselves, it doesn't work. But if we realize that our old self is crucified on the cross, not because of us, but because we were crucified with him. And then we go to verse 8. It says, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. I, I, I really love this uh, uh, because uh, he is making it known, Paul is making it known that like, that like God doesn't want to reform us. That's what we want to do. We want to get... Uh, self-help books and watch um, self-help videos on YouTube and watch TED Talks and all that is fine because we are, 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 are trying to reform ourselves but while we are trying to reform ourselves God is trying to kill us That is the uh, truth. God is uh, trying to kill our old self. Therefore, it cannot, once it is dead, he says it like, he died once. He doesn't have to do it again. When we accept Jesus into our 
hearts, when we uh, trust in what he did on the cross, our old self dies. There is nothing to reform. You have a choice to choose your new self. For the, for the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So consider yourself dead to sin, your old self, and alive to God in Christ Jesus. When we have trusted in Jesus for our salvation, we have died to our old self. But... It may not feel like it. You're saying, oh, I died to my old self. I feel none of that. All you have to do is accept it. God always plays the long game. Why? Because it's already settled. It's already done. He doesn't have to worry about you being perfect. He made you perfect. Now it's time for you to catch up. Jesus is all about the process. I love the story of Peter. I love the story of Peter. Jesus asked Peter, who do you say I am? Peter gets it right. Jesus is like, my dog. On this rock, I will build my church. You are the man. Peter's like, yes, we are best friends. I'll do anything for you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll do anything for you. And then he proves it. Someone grabs Jesus. Peter grabs his machete. There's a whole bunch of twirls and goes after his ear and takes it off. And he says, see, I'd do anything for you, Jesus. And Jesus is like, come on, Peter, God, come on. Ah, gets the ear, here, man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry he did that. And he put the ear back on, and he's like, that boy crazy, I know he crazy, he crazy. That's the homie, he crazy though, I'm sorry. And he just looks at uh, Peter with that look, come on, bro. And Jesus tells Peter, I, you will, I mean, uh, uh, we are homies, but you will deny me publicly, though. Jesus is like, no. Uh, Peter's like, no, I'm not. I just cut off somebody's ear for you. So, okay. And that time came and he denied Jesus. And Peter felt horrible. Have you denied <laughs> Can you think about denying a person publicly? Someone uh, denying you that's super closely, like, I don't know them. Publicly? Can you imagine denying a person publicly and then that person, the next thing that happens is that person dies? And you're like, man, I didn't even say I'm sorry. And that's what happened. Jesus dies. But, but what I love about this, the best part about this survey is that, is that Jesus rolls again to life and what's the first thing what's one of the first things that he did he said where's Peter and it wasn't a vengeance it's where's the homie where's the homie at okay I'll go get him Jesus was never concerned about Peter getting it right because one of the most powerful people in the Bible never did. But Jesus was all about the process and forgiveness. He went and found Peter. Jesus is all about the process. Okay, where am I? Verse Let's hop up this verse uh, uh, 10. It says, For the death he died, he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. You, your old person is dead. So 
let your new one live. Your old person is dead. The old you is gone. You can't get it and you can't grab them. So in light of that, let your new one live. A lot of us in this room are not doing that. We're not letting our change be displayed. We are like, I don't feel like I am changed. So therefore, I'm going to live like it. But you do not need to feel it. The more you live, God will allow you to see the change that is taking place in you. The more you live, the more you see that you are catching up. But have patience with yourself. But have patience with yourself. Let your new one live. Verse uh, 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 12 says this, therefore, because your old person has died and you are letting your new one live, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. Paul gets very practical. We all like being practical, but I don't like this practical. Mm, not give, this one, give me one, two, three, a, B, C steps. But, uh, but Paul says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. Your old self is completely gone and your new self is here. Paul is saying, let's act like it. And not, and not just act like it, let's live from the truth. We are lying to ourselves. What if we start actually telling ourselves that we are new? Maybe we would develop different cycles and different patterns. Hey, this morning I'm new. New mind, new heart, new spirit. I am new. And then it says, do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. That's right. Do not offer. What it's saying is, is don't be the old you. How many of you in this room have came a long way? Good. See? And you gave yourself some credit. He is saying, here, it's saying, in light of you being new, do not talk that way. Do not talk about that person that way. Do not put down that person. Don't cause harm against someone else. Love yourself well. And all that entails. And do not use it for unrighteousness. Meaning like do not use it for wrong. But as those who are alive from the dead. Offer yourselves to God. I love this part. Because it says do not use your hands, feet, eyes, for anything wrong. Instead, use it for right. And all the parts of yourself, God has weapons. And all the parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. If you like have a big mouth and talk a lot and talk about people, God is saying, stop that and use your big mouth to talk about God a lot. It's, he's not saying to stop it. He's just saying, use it differently. That's what he's saying. Use it for righteousness. And for weapons of righteousness. For sin will not rule 
over you because you are not under the law but under the grace. It said that sin will not rule over you. It does not say that you will stop sinning. It does not say that you will keep grabbing your old self. It does not say that. It said it won't rule over you. See, when we are alive, our natural tendency was to reject God. But when we live now, and you could, if you really pay attention, your natural tendency is to be, um, is to accept God's ways. You may not feel like it, you may not give yourself a credit, but, but let me give you an example. If you don't spend time with God, if you have not read your Bible in a week, do you feel bad? Yes. Do you know what that is? A yearning for the right thing. I don't, I'm not here to condemn us. I'm not him here to say, hey, get better. What I'm saying is, is that deep down under all of those layers of your old self that God is taking away, that there is your new self and, and that new self yearns to be with him. That new self yearns to do the right things. That new self yearns to not reject God. It does. And for me personally, that is hard to recognize because I am so focused on wrong and right. What I want for us is for us to recognize that we are under grace. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, because of God's loving kindness, his undeserved kindness for us, that he took on our old person and died. And our old person died with him. And when he came up out the water, he had all life and so do we. Your old person is dead. Let your new one live. It reminds me, this is the last thing I'm going to say, that it reminds me of a life of a caterpillar. I did research on a, 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 a caterpillar. It was very in, intriguing of what I found. Did you know that a, 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 a caterpillar cannot cocoon, cocoon, cannot make a cocoon if it is sprayed with pesticide? Somehow the cocoon doesn't fully form and it dehydrates and dies. That is how maybe it feels for you. The a, a caterpillar knows it needs to change. It has a natural yearning to, but somehow cannot finish the process because of unhealthy things on it. Because of unhealthy things attached to it. And what I am telling you is that that is not you because of what Jesus did on the cross. There is no pesticide sprayed on you. You can change. For anyone in this room and outside of this room, if you feel like you don't deserve change, You do. And you may feel like the pesticide on you. Like I did this to myself. There is, there is nothing 
that can keep you from the love of God and from change. And for some of you who have been walking this journey for a while and you are a believer and you're like, I know I should at least feel like I'm changed, but I just really don't. Maybe, maybe you are a butterfly still acting as a caterpillar. Maybe you are a butterfly still acting as a caterpillar. You have went through the process, you are changed, yet you're still just walking on limbs. When you can fly, when you can fly, the butterfly wings fly. When your natural tendency is to fly, yet you are choosing not to because you have not accepted nor investigated your new life. The old you is dead, so let your new one live. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for this time. We thank you that because we have put our trust in you, that you have given us, given us new life, that your grace has changed us. Like we are graced to change. We have the grace to change. Because of your loving kindness, because of your undeserved kindness towards us, we can change. And we have changed. Help us to live from that. Help us to live from that. I share that with everyone else. Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand.